the, uh, the, the father of the web. Um, it should be accessible from any kind of hardware that can connect to the internet, stationary or mobile, small screen or large. So <laughs> we do that, huh? Because I does responsive, I has breakpoints. So what is responsive? What does that mean when we talk about responsive websites, responsive design? Is it using media queries to hide elements when the page gets small? Is it lazy loading your images without providing a no script fallback? How about loading your page content via Ajax vis-a-vis -vis spa apps? This is new at the time, new issue. <laughs> what started out, uh, referring to um, responsive design again, what started out as a method to optimize uh, your designs for various screen widths has turned ever so slowly into multiple canvas design. What do you mean by multi-canvas multi -canvas design? Who does responsive design at where they work? Oh, no. Well, like, we design so it like looks good. Okay. I do. But like different experiences. You work with, you work with, you work yeah. with designers uh, on that? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, brand new, yeah. How, what kind of artifacts do you get that express responsive design? Uh, probably Figma. And, and you have you have a, a mobile view, yeah. uh, maybe maybe but, tablet view, maybe not that good. But desktop yeah. <laughs> view, mobile and desktop. Mobile and desktop. Stick, we'll stick you have so you have, but there could be iPad. You have a mobile canvas, and you have a desktop canvas. Okay, so right. you don't mean different like experiences, but just like making sure the layout shuffles according. Well, every, everywhere is different, but but you essentially you get here's your experience for mobile maybe that's just a different size but okay, fair. Here, here's your experience for mobile here's your experience for desktop uh we so, so maybe a little bit of context this presentation that i gave was called your design tools are broken and it's really fundamentally about how we all suck at thinking about web design and web development we're thinking about it the wrong way and all of our design tools that help us to to create websites are designed for print and not for the web. And so we get, here's your mobile design. Here's your desktop design. You know why? Because our, our our web design tools to this day, to this day in 2022, our web design tools have fixed widths. They are not web design tools. I right. animated about that one. I didn't mean to start a rant. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm easily drinking. <laughs> Our web design tools still suck. All right. <laughs> uh, moving on. So what started as a method to optimize your designs for various screen sizes and widths has turned ever so slowly to multiple canvas design, right? Responsive, this is the important part. Responsive isn't so much a technique or a process, but a fundamental characteristic of the web platform. So a responsive site is really one that acknowledges the fundamental characteristics of the medium in which it's built. This philosophy implies that the characteristics of material should influence the form for which it's used. What is the nature of your material? That will, that will govern, that will inform at least what it is you, you, uh, you are building. As an example, there we go. To cover brick with plaster, and this plaster with fresco is perfectly legitimate, but to cover brick with cement and divide the cement with joints that it may look like stone is to tell a falsehood. And it's just as contemptible a procedure as the other is noble. Oop, wrong way. There we go. Whoop, too far. There we go. Anybody know what this is? Ikea chair? It's not an Ikea chair. <laughs> no, 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 no. School chair from the 50s? Uh, it is probably from the 50s. Yes, it is the Eames chair. And it is a very famous chair. Uh, in the world of design, of product design. So the Eames chair is the epitome of material honesty. It uses a mold the moldable property of plywood and embraces the wood's aesthetic qualities. This chair is beautiful and practical because it does not pretend to be anything false. The Eames chair follows the grain of its material, both literally and figuratively. Frank Camaro, uh, if you haven't heard of him, is fantastic but he hasn't written in many many years uh roughly about the time i gave this this presentation actually 
Um, but he said, I believe every material has a grain, including the web. And I believe it too. The grain of something is its, its natural direction. When we go against the grain of material, we are battling against the material's nature. It is the nature of the web to be flexible. And it should be our role as designers and developers to embrace this flexibility and produce pages which, by being flexible, are accessible to all. That's from the Dow Web Design 2000. Great book. You should read it. Often the case, uh, particularly with the web, we fight against the grain without realizing it, partly because we use metaphors from other types of media to describe, describe things that are unique to the web. Desktops, files, folders, web pages, um, buttons. They uh, uh, also because many tools we use do the same as well. They and us do not accept the web for what it is and attempt to impose metaphors which no longer work. Worse, we think it's reality. No metaphors or analogies are needed for insight, only the willingness to listen to the subject speak for itself, even if it contradicts received wisdom. We have built for ourselves a library of metaphors and analogies for the way we speak and think about the web. When a thing is new, these metaphors and analogies are useful to move adoption. Once adoption is lo no longer the issue, and I think we can safely say at this point that adoption of the web is not really an issue, <laughs> Um, these metaphors should melt away in favor of speaking of the thing in terms of itself. We, the, the people who contribute to the development of things on the web, need to stop thinking of our roles as divisions of a whole with well-defined lines. If we consider a cake as a metaphor for an application, we tend to think of our individual roles as slices of that cake. This is inaccurate. What we, what we do affects the whole outcome. Rather, we are an ingredient in a cake. We are dispersed throughout its entirety, interacting with other ingredients in particular ways to produce a pound cake, a short cake, angel food cake, bunt cake, red velvet, chocolate, strawberry, sheet cake. There are endless possibilities of the whole when we operate as an ingredient. Who said that? <laughs> oh, me, just now. And seven years ago. Uh, it is, or is it conceivable that a sound understanding of URLs and its principle of one address, one resource, could carry weight with how a website or web application is designed? Is it, is it possible that understanding the importance of semantically written HTML could have an effect? on the structure of the API endpoints that we use to populate that structure. Today, okay, this is, this is gonna be dictated, but today, seven years ago, many browsers exist that are powerful enough to flip the bottleneck to the network. Meaning, seven years ago, when this talk was given, it had become, only recently apparent that the power uh, to execute JavaScript on the, on the, within the browser was now greater, was now no longer the bottleneck in the performance of an application. The performance of the application bottleneck flipped from executing JavaScript on the server or on the client, excuse me, to network traffic. The network became the bottleneck approximately seven years ago. In an attempt to improve, well, more, maybe 10 years ago, but I, we had some time before we just figured out spots. Um, in an attempt to improve performance and user experience, the application logic moved from the server to the browser in order to take advantage of the power of the browser and and mitigate the bottleneck that was the network. Um, so time out, uh, back to real, like current time. Who listens to JS Party uh, podcast? 
they figured somebody might, but okay, whatever. I was listening to, a, 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 I think it's the most recent episode, and it was really fascinating. It was so timely because they did a little debate. The debate was, were spas a big mistake? And it was kind of funny and humorous and lighthearted and yada, yada, yada. But, um, but at no point did any of the, the people in the debate bring up this point, that there was a very important reason why spas came about. And it had to do with the fact that our capabilities within the browser had advanced greatly, but the network had not kept caught up. Where do we find ourselves now? We're in our fifth generation um, of wireless network protocols, which are super fast or can be super fast. Uh, our wire connections are very fast. Um, it is no longer always the case that a application's uh, performance is bottlenecked by the network. In fact, often it's the other way around now. Often we have so much JavaScript or our JavaScript is written so poorly that um, that the the problem is is on the sur on the uh, client again. And so some uh, frameworks said, you know what we can do a better job on the server. And that pipe, that line between the server and the client is no longer a bottleneck. And we have other ways of going about it. HTML over the wire. We should go back to the so. some years ago. Um, CSS. CSS has two responsibilities that are interrelated. Let's see if this will catch up. Hey, there we go. Uh, two responsibilities which are interrelated and which pertain to being of the web. The first is to provide visual structure for the web. It performs for visual input, what proper and semantic HTML provide for the cognitive, where HTML provides semantic, uh, um, like structural meaning, CSS can, does provide visual meaning. They are really two sides of the same coin. I have a really good article about this uh, and a presentation I gave at Utah JS two years ago called The Miseducation of CSS, I highly recommend you read it or watch the video, because I'm right about it. Uh, the other responsibility that CSS provides is ornamentation. Don't let the label trivialize its importance, though. Ornamentation is not simply making things look pretty. Uh, uh, as so many have patronizingly reduced the craft of front end to in the past. Um, I, and unfortunately, with a move back to the server, I foresee this being being a common refrain from engineers in the in the coming years uh, oh yeah i don't i don't know how to make things look pretty like you do you want to piss me off fast that's how you describe front end um ornament according to frank lloyd wright you guys do know who frank lloyd wright is i hope great ornament so you can trust him he's you can trust that he's right on this right ornament Integral element of architecture. Ornament is an architect it is to architecture what efflorescence of a tree or plant is to its structure. It is of the thing, not on it. Emotional in its nature, ornament is, if well conceived, not only poetry, but is the character of structure revealed and enhanced. If not well conceived, architecture is destroyed by ornament. Of the web, not on the web. CSS is quite expressive. And we can choose to use it to create ornamentation that is either of the web or simply on it. We can choose to be materially honest with our CSS and our designs, or we can choose to rely on the falseness of outmoded metaphors. Steve Jobs, another semi smart person, said it's not just what it looks like and feels like design is how it works. So never let people reduce what we do on the front end to make things look pretty. So I have a question for you guys. How did that section hold up? Is it relevant today? I think it is. In fact, I would say there's not a single thing in there that I would retract. The lessons I've learned with respect to the web platform at that point and in my career and the knowledge I've gained from that day to this are relevant, are as relevant today as they ever were. In fact, I would argue more so. So 
Let me ask the question. Just with that over here, dear. <laughs> uh, no sound. Mute. Oh, bottom left. Oh, bottom. Yeah, muted. Oh, I'm muted. That's not cool. Let's see if we can do it again. Okay. Still muted. Ah. Double rainbow. Oh my god. Yeah, it's right. a. I had it time box, and now it's not a longer time box. Okay, so let's show, let's uh, start presenting and chain. <laughs> what does this mean? What does it mean, guys? <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Uh, let's talk about web, web fundamentals. Oh, I need to come back up. Um, okay. Yeah. So what does this mean for us in practical terms? It is my view that now is the perfect time to become deeply familiar with or reacquaint oneself with the foundational fundamentals of the web platform. Going deep on web fundamentals means not having to completely start over when moving from one framework to another, should we have to, or even from one language to another. It means expertise in web fundamentals is transferable to any front end or even front end related space. Uh, it means this is the more HTML is going to be written on server side templates than previously. Do you think? Your typical Ruby or Elixir developer knows how to write semantic HTML. I can tell you from experience that most do not. Uh, and yet, building web products for the widest possible audience requires expert knowledge of these things. Your skill set will be in high demand no matter the stack. So, CSS in the hands of the back end devs. Um, I think it's important to note that this ain't your grandpa's web platform anymore. There have been a number of articles written lately that I think are part and parcel of this shift that is happening uh, among server-side frameworks that's, that are kind of like, hey, um, maybe you don't need a framework. Hey, maybe the web platform actually has just about everything you need. Now, I'm not making that case. I'm not, you definitely can do that. I'm not saying startups should like, they just vanilla JavaScript only. Uh, I think it requires a certain degree of expertise. And I think us, we as a uh, community, as a profession, are on balance not ready for that. I hope we become ready. I don't think we're there. But that's why I'm talking about this right now with fundamentals. Um, such as SEO, or if you have concerns, such as SEO, ADA compliance, internal tooling for customers, support teams, support for power users, accessibility, internationalization, customization, mobile devices, VR, or things heretofore unimagined upon the web platform, then uh, you have these concerns. We can be concerned with semantic HTML. Some things that you could choose to become a greater expert in and add value to yourself and your profession, to the company that you're at, or just generally be better at your craft. Uh, semantic HTML means ARIA. And do you guys know what the first rule of ARIA is? Max knows. Max, what is the first rule of ARIA? Don't use ARIA. Don't use ARIA. <laughs> Meaning. <laughs> Meaning, semantic HTML elements have all of the ARIA, all the things that ARIA provides baked into it. If you have a button, you don't need to put roll button on it. It's a button. You're there, man. <laughs> Most of what you need to do to be ARIA compliant means you don't need to be using ARIA attributes. ARIA attributes largely are for when you can't use semantic HTML, which ought to be pretty few and far between. Which, mean, which makes, by the way, using ARIA a hell of a lot more simple than you might have thought. So uh, the, the block level elements, H, uh, inline elements, forms, inputs, picture elements, video on the web, audio on the web, 
cores. This will catch up in a minute, I hope. Cores meaning cross origin resource sharing, which is an aspect of HTMLness. Come on, you can do it. Oh, it was great earlier. Uh, switch over there. Go up and down. Uh, preloading is another thing I have on here. Let's see if it'll catch up. And I'm going to stop sharing and then try it again. Uh, tab and that tab and all those. <laughs> um, CSS concerns that you may want to refamiliarize yourself with. Layout rules. Decoration rules. This goes back to the two sided coin of CSS and the fact that you need to go read the miseducation of CSS on my blog, 365jsthings.tech. Go check it out. It's great. Um, or go to 2020's Utah.js conference and watch the video there on YouTube. Um, CSS has two aspects positional rules, layout rules, and decoration or uh, ornamentation rules, and you should not mix them. But that's, so orient yourself with uh, what those rules are. Um, we have CSS variables, guys. We did not have CSS variables seven years ago. If you do not, if you are not deeply familiar with CSS variables, I promise you they are way cooler than they seem. They're not SAS variables in the browser. They're way better than that. Uh, Flexbox, grid. Aspect ratio, who's familiar with this rule? Who's used it? It's phenomenal. It's, it's crazy how something so small is so, so, brings so much joy. It's like this stupid watch, which I waited forever to get because, like, I got a, I got a phone. It does everything this watch does. Why do I need the watch? Just pull it out. But it's like, it brings me so much joy. Aspect ratio does that too. Uh, CSS Houdini, who's heard of this? Really cool. A little a low level, um, but if you're super geeky, Get into CSS Houdini. You ever wanted to do uh, custom CSS filtering, like uh, like masking and like crazy, like like or, or like color, like shifting and stuff? CSS Houdini lets you do that. Uh, color functions, which are coming. Uh, if you want, to, let's get even more specific. Let's get more specific than that. CSS selectors. Are you familiar with the universal selectors, with type selectors, with class selectors? With ID selectors, guys, attribute selectors, you know what you can do with attribute selectors? It's crazy. I didn't even know about this one until this, this, uh, this talk. The I at the end, you know what that does? It means uh, case insensitive. I didn't know that existed. It's amazing. Uh, and it's existed like for freaking ever. Selector grouping. That's just CSS selectors, guys. I could, you, I could have an entire presentation on any one of these uh, things. It's great. Okay, media queries, guys. Media queries, right? We we can has response, so we has media queries, right? <laughs> what can we query with media queries? Well, screen size, duh. Um, how about device size? Okay, fine. Hoverability. Does your is your device able to hover? Oh, uh, there we go. Now I'm caught up. Um, can it point? What do you mean? Can it point? Do you have a device? that can yeah like a mouse or a stylus and and how granular is that pointer is it very fine like a mouse pixel perfect is it uh tapping that's like with a big fat like old man fatty finger uh very coarse you can you can do media queries based on the, the granularity of your pointability uh you can query the aspect ratio the color the color gamut whether or not they have inverted colors, uh, the orientation of the device. Okay, let's, there we go. Um, how it handles overflow, what? Prefers, uh, how it prefers color scheme, whether or not they prefer a higher contrast or lower contrast, prefers reduced motion. You've probably heard of that one. Whether or not scripting is available. That was so cool. Uh, things that you could kind of get ahead of the pack on coming out, container queries. So I was sort of involved in the community group that helped uh, establish the picture element. Who's used the picture element? Anyone ever used the picture element? I've used the picture element. It's pretty cool. Uh, very, very flexible. 
Um, so I helped with that. I created the first uh, web component polyfill for it. Um, that same work, the reason I bring that up, that same working group it has been working on container queries for 10 years. And it's finally being implemented, like now. Like all browsers are right now in the process of implementing container queries. If you like media queries, container queries is going to blow that up. Like, blow it up. It's amazing. And I can talk about any of these things uh, after or during or whatever when we're done with this. Uh, just you know, make a note and talk to me because I can tell I get excited about it. Okay. Uh, also, CSS top. CSS toggles. CSS toggles super cool. You ever guys, you guys ever use checkbox hacks where you like can do like you interact with this thing over here and it does something over here uh, without JavaScript. Uh, you can use a checkbox to kind of to, to to toggle it, but it's kind of hacky. Well, this kind of is not hacky. Is this is all in CSS? No checkbox hack that lets you. Um, inform CSS that a given element is a toggle for a given thing. And it's pretty freaking sweet. It's coming. Um, that's what's going to ask. How many look is going to be uh, Gun, Dukost, and uh, Tashbinach? I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Top of life. Top of life. Wow, I got really going there at the end of the <laughs> uh, uh, Questions, questions. Do you have any questions, any thoughts? What does a container query do? Oh my gosh. How much time do we have? OK, uh, <laughs> container queries. Imagine a card, a, a, a UX card, right? A card, a familiar concept. So I'm using an outmoded metaphor, but <laughs> we have the card. Um, and it, let's say it's in your main content area. Okay, uh, you can write the CSS for the card component itself, right? So okay, you're going to assume it's just going to take up whatever space it has. You write your stuff. It's style looks great, wonderful. You got your. Let's say you have. Uh, you have an. Uh, uh, do it this way. No, do it. There we go. Do it this way. So you have like uh, an image and then a title, and then underneath the image and title, a subtitle, and then the content, right? In the card? Yeah, in the card. Right? Now let's say that same card, that same information that that card has, you also have a need for a very, very similar thing uh, in, a, in a sidebar. Um, like, okay, here's the card you're looking at. Here's a list of cards. Um, and then all you really need to do is reorient the stuff inside that card. You cannot use a media query because a media query queries device size, among many other things. But what it doesn't query is how much room does that particular card have right now inside of its container. Ooh. Container queries will let you do that. It says, okay, well, if I only have this much room, then now I want to stack everything and center it. That is so cool. Uh, it is very is that done cool. yet or no? It is not done oh. yet. The specification is done. Uh, there are, uh, I believe, a couple of the browsers have it behind a feature flag. Um, you should definitely go out and read the spec stuff. And the, there's all this stuff is on GitHub. It's really, really cool. It goes through all of it. Um, it's been a long, long time coming, and a lot of work has been put into it. It's uh, super duper fantastic. Um, great question. Thank you. Uh, what else? Anything else? Yeah. I'd love to hear your opinion of like Tailwind because it sounds like you do a lot of uh, in CSS or SAS. <laughs> and we're done. Thank you. <laughs> what do I what do I think about like, Tailwind? Like the 10 word. Do you want my emotional response or my logical response? Logical. My logical response. OK. Uh, my logical response of Tailwind is, it is if, if you are an organization that needs to produce an MVP really fast, then tools like Rails and Tailwind are probably the way to go. Because you can have a, a person can know enough 
about all the things that need to be done to get that up quick and fast. Tailwind is not scalable uh, to an organization that, that as it grows. I will probably die on that hill. Library. That's his bold claim. <laughs> Um, oh, who was it? Uh, I want to say, uh, what's his name? It was a real name. His uh, online name is Adacto, but maybe it's not him. Maybe it was someone else. Someone fairly well-known in the CSS community, I can't remember who it was right now, made an observation. Maybe it was Luke Wablowski. I can't remember his last name. Um, made an observation about Tailwind, uh, and he also does not care for it. He said, um, he thinks it comes down to kind of similar to how you think about programming uh, and why one might lean object-oriented versus functional. You are a person who likes to be prescriptive. Then Tailwind probably feels comfortable to you. If you are a person who likes to be descriptive, then Tailwind will probably feel very uncomfortable to you. Um, and that is that is just about the most charitable explanation of Tailwind that I've been able to get behind. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's um, I, I don't know if that answers your question. I, it doesn't, actually. I didn't say why it, it's not scalable. Um, It would take more detailed response to tell you why I think it's not scalable. <laughs> uh, but by all means, we can chat it up later, and I can I can get really animated. About it. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I got one. Yeah. Uh, so I think you made the comment that a lot of us depend on these frameworks that we lose some of the raw skill sets. I did say that. Thank you for catching that. I yeah. listen to most not, not kidding. Um, <laughs> well, it was what, like it was almost kind of a throwaway thing. So you it was, well, no. What tools would you recommend that people like myself, frankly, who is so in React or whatever tools we use, that we sometimes forget about half of those terms up there and need to use them more? You know, I've done like well, I haven't done, but I've heard of hundred days CSS kind of as an example to like really get raw. That doesn't teach yeah. you the latest. That just I think I, just, I think it's different for every person and how you learn. So, but I can tell you what I do. Um, I I subscribe to as not as many but as many good <laughs> um, front end related newsletters or web development related newsletters as I can so the, the main ones front end focus that I uh, subscribe to JavaScript Weekly uh, Responsive Design Weekly I actually did I stopped or it stopped I forget which um, there's uh, CSS Weekly. Which is a good one. I've heard many of these. Uh, oh, great. these these are great. Indeed. These are great. I was actually recently in JavaScript Weekly in the the tips, and uh, I had my first. Um, sorry, tangent real fast. I, I had my first uh, viral post. The first post I ever did it got on Hacker News. Um, those people are terrible. I never want to go viral again. Uh, uh, it was, I had like low self-esteem for like a week and then realized, wait, they're all idiots and like super online. Who cares what they think? <laughs> um, anyway, it was a, it was, it was a controversial topic though. It was why I avoid async await. So if you want to have that conversation oh. later. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so newsletters I find really useful. Uh, one thing that I, I find a lot of people don't do that I would very much recommend. Uh, I do this with uh, mostly with the JavaScript with with TC thirty uh, thirty nine, but you can but almost all the the, the standards bodies have GitHub. Uh, they, they they track their stuff on GitHub. Go and read the proposals. Go and read the the work that's being done on there. It's fat. A lot of it you got to slog through some like technical crap, but a lot of it's really cool. You can read the overview. Like this is what we're trying to do. Like, wow, that's really freaking cool. Uh, records and tuples coming in JavaScript, guys. It's going to change the way you write React. I promise you. Um, uh, there are there are people to follow on Twitter. I don't do Twitter so much anymore because of the very high, high, high low, high, whatever signal to noise ratio. Um, you have to go through a lot of what people think about things that I don't care about uh, in order to get to the things I do care about. Because apparently, you have to bring your whole self 
to Twitter and all I really care about is your front end self. So um, I don't care that you have cats or what their names are or that you feel like they're your babies. I really don't care. Um, so those are some of the avenues that I uh, podcast. Uh, I, oh, so yeah, I, I I have not found a podcast on on front end related stuff that I find good. It seems that front end developers really suck at hosting podcasts. It's boring as hell. Oh, even like like um, uh, West Boss and uh, what's his name on um, on Syntax. Which is probably the best one out there. I find, and it's short. It's like twenty minutes per episode. And I'm still like, oh my gosh, get on with it. It's uh, or like, why are you talking about this? Nobody cares. Or I don't care. I don't know. Um, or they go off on some tangent, and it's just like, like I'm not, I'm not here for your personality. Sorry, I'm here for the like. I'll, we'll go have drinks later. On, I'll you know be there for your personality but i'm listening to this for information for things that engage me and i i don't know maybe i'm just i have no hobbies so this is like what i do <laughs> um, this is my hobby and so i don't know i'm lame i guess um yeah but those are my sources uh i i think also it comes from having done this for a really long time i'm old and so <laughs> uh but but going to uh, to to the Mozilla document uh, documentation, the MDN, and just browsing it is surprisingly fascinating. So um, that too. And um, uh, have I if I given you guys any um, Max or, or uh, Nick have I given you any other advice on how to get information? I can't recall. I often give really great advice. So if you remember what. I was. <laughs> That was all good. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check out some weekly stuff. Uh, anything else? I'm sucking up a lot of time. Yeah. Is it so when you subscribe subscribe to these, are these like emails? Yeah, yeah. Email oh, cool. newsletters. Yeah. Um, you could probably just, I mean, mm -hmm. pick a thing weekly and you'll you'll find oh, it's a newsletter. Yeah, I'll put in my uh, or if you don't want to give me your, your email address, you can always just go to the website and see the whole back catalog of it all. Um oh, oh, uh 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 Tyler uh, bite dot dev it's like bytes dot dev. Bytes dot dev. yeah yeah I got something at the end from that one yeah he uh, that he's he's great and he's entertaining yeah, like, like I'd watch I'd I'd listen to a podcast that he does McGinnis? yeah Tyler McGinnis uh uh he's he's actually great to listen to um you have a podcast he has a YouTube channel oh uh the CSS Weekly guy actually has a YouTube channel out too um but again I watch him like. The presentation style just doesn't hook me, is what it is. I don't know. Um, I like Tyler's humor, though. And and did you guys ever watch, uh, watch Fun Fun Function back in the day? Back in the day, oh, a couple of years ago. He could put on a good video, right? I could I could listen to a podcast by him, but then it started getting all like, like it was it was very narrow. Like here's how you do this thing, and then become here's some philosophical stuff about. It's like yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> So I'm I'm like I'm I don't know. But here I give this presentation that's all philosophical. So <laughs> I'm a total hypocrite. Uh yeah, any, any questions? Any questions from online? And how would I know? I could probably hear you, right? Yep. Okay. Come right up. Any so everybody's on mute. They're probably like, I don't know, doing something else. Playing Wordle. Yeah. I'll try to figure out how to say this. So you mentioned seven years ago the bottleneck was on the network side right yeah. and that was why everything transferred over to the front end yeah and then now when that bottleneck kind of was you know no longer a thing things start going back to the server side and i'm wondering like if you're to be like a level higher like a layer higher and kind of see the forest through the trees do you see any like rules when it comes to yes that? like oh hell yeah re least resistance sort of thing oh absolutely yeah so this is all market forces right uh, and incentives uh, as thing as technology improves on in one area faster than another area because of whatever advancement, then the need to adjust will happen. This pendulum swing between fat client and thick client is going to keep happening. This is not the last time it's going to happen. Um, 
it's like yeah the, the i mean the lifting yourself up and looking looking at, at the higher level the, the forest through the trees or whatever the saying is um it was this this presentation it's the web platform that's the thing um it's always going to be a thing and it's not just and the the web platform is not just the technologies that we have it's not just css javascript and and um and HTML, there we go. <laughs> uh, and a key thing that was in this presentation originally that I didn't talk about because it's not it's quite what uh, this was about was also um, uh, URIs. URIs are a key important aspect of the web platform. And I, I kind of mentioned it here one resource, one, uh, one, one path, one URL. Um, what SPAS did for all the good things that SPAS did, and SPAS really advanced front-end development generally, and made and, and turned us. It allowed us to be perceived as um, just as capable as back-end engineers, which I fought for most of my career against. Where I would have to school back-end engineers on how to do their job, and they were shocked because you're just a front-end engineer. You just make stuff look pretty, and also in the same breath i don't understand css it's so hard like which one is it dude <laughs> like you can't have it both ways but whatever um <laughs> see see what it does <laughs> um one resource one url uh spas broke that uh or at least allowed us to break it and we really ought to get back to that our state the state of any given view on the web ought to be reflected in the url because those are shareable. And as Tim Berners-Lee said, we want to be able to share anything. Yeah, I think another motivator from back then was also SEO. Um, at least it seems to me like as we moved, people made like wanted to make their marketing sites with React and stuff, right? And then they cared about SEO, as so then they had to do server-side rendering, and then we just did went from within. Uh, so I guess uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was definitely some of that. A lot of um, a lot of work went into Google. Uh, had some pretty bad ideas in how to deal with that. Like um, it was only pretty recently they finally sunsetted. What was that horrible thing that they had everyone do? Um, uh, crap! What was the name of it? What was it? No, well, yes, that was, <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not sunsetted. Uh, no, it was, um, gosh, dang it. You had to essentially rewrite every page in this, like, proprietary HTML. AMD? A yeah, no, no, that's what it was called. Not AMD. It was, really, on, it was like you're close on chat. Oh, what was it? He said AMP on chat. AMP! Did you say that? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry, my bad. AMP, yeah, AMP. That's right. Oh, it was awful. Oh, it was just just terrible. And and marketers revolted finally. So they got rid of it. Um yeah, I should have a chat with them that might help. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um but that was an attempt to deal with that. Uh there was a micro uh micro dang it, what was it called? I want to say micro data. That's not quite right. But it was kind of along the lines of ARIA, where you can mark up your HTML with metadata about it so that Google and search engines could parse it and like really get into like the meat of, of what's going on. But that's that's not quite uh, what we're talking about. Um, eventually, Google just decided to execute JavaScript and it turns out that works great. So yeah. Um, anything else? Yeah. If you like foresee a future where instead of people downloading applications and having a web browser where it all becomes just one thing, there's going to be something that runs and you don't necessarily have to um, download an application because you can just run it on the browser that becomes the application. Uh -huh. You see there being like in terms of a front end engineer, like that future. Do you feel like it's going to swing back the other way? I'm I'm notoriously bad at predicting the future. Um, it's I mean I how about this? If you like envisioning that is what the what everything is moving towards, what would you say? Like how would that look like? Uh so maybe a um um oh gosh, see my my old man C L brain is is malfunctioning. Um 
what is the technology that tries to do this right now where you can what, what is it electron no, no no not electron it's where you have a web app but it's like not in such a way where you can add it to your home screen on like android right now but uh you know what i'm talking about yeah, I guess you can tell what I'm talking about. Like save the bookmark. It's like essentially a bookmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is but it what else? PW, yeah, PW, see, I should look the chat knows, man. The chat knows. <laughs> uh yeah, PWAs. Um, like that actually worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh like probably eventually. I mean, it took 10 years for container queries to get where we are. Like streaming, you know, you know Yeah. Um downloads. honestly, I, I think that the the moves, the HTML over the wire that the server side is doing is going to inform something on the front end i don't know what it is yet i have no idea but ultimately i think this is good because any advancement at any time anyone tries to solve something where there's a problem other people get involved and try to solve it also um which just creates a lot of awesome solutions to things so i'm universally confident that the web platform isn't going away what shape that takes though i don't know um always bet on javascript always bet on the web uh yeah amd didn't kill it so suck it <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah or not amd what was the other thing uh wasm now but it, what it was before that wasm wasm didn't kill javascript this isn't going to kill the web uh, as we know it, or front end engineering. I'm not worried about it at all. It's going to be awesome in the end. But the shape of it, I have no idea. I, I mean, I didn't sell my Facebook stock. Now I've lost half of it. So I also held on to my Bitcoin. I'm screwed all like always. So um, yeah. Okay. So uh, unless there's something else, I am over time. So thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. You uh, you taught me a lot. I'm gonna go subscribe to a ton of letters and uh, figure out what I'm doing. I work in React. Um, so real quick, uh, Nailnet uh, sponsored our meal tonight. So let's thank them. And then Taxbit, I'm rep Taxbit uh, hosting. So uh, both are hiring. If you have any questions about Taxbit careers or Nailnet, or if you want, let's network amongst ourselves as well. I'm sure that we all have opportunities we can share. So feel free. We probably got the next, you know, feel free to head if you like. We've got about 30 minutes. I just for fun, I was going to share um, a fun. This actually came from the byte.dev newsletter this week. This coding problem. Yes, yes. So this might be fun. So it, it, optional. If you got to go, I get it. Totally fine. But um, I'll see if I can. I can't bump it up because I lose my vertical space. I'm sorry. Um, but what color is showing up? What's the background color of this page? Take, take a look over. And just for fun, you know, see what you can find. This came from that Tyler McInnes newsletter this week. Um, Retool sponsored this coding post. So take a minute, not afraid of silence, and uh, tell me what color you think the background will be. Oh, okay, got it. And I won't know the. I have the answer, but if you ask me why, I might just defer over to Corey again. I'll do my best. Pink me, whatever. I'll see if I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So I'll give another thirty seconds here. Um, oh, the stupid! Oh, damn! I didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever Corey is talking about. Uh, yeah. I'll give you a hint. It's there's three colors on there. It's probably one of those. <laughs> so that's helpful. It's either red, golden rod, or Rebecca purple. Two of those I didn't know are colors. Apparently, so there's a story about Rebecca Purple I can tell later, but you know this story. I do. Yeah, yeah. You would you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> can I give a guess and try to walk through why? Yes. Let me take a quick poll. Yeah. And then I want to hear a walk through. Yeah. Uh, so who thinks background will be red? Okay. Got a few. Who thinks golden rod? Okay. And then last one we got Rebecca Purple. What do we think? Okay. Was it Max? Michael. Michael. That's all right. I, so, Max. Sorry. Michael, what do you think? So we have a style sheet and it's cascading, right? So I'm thinking we have cool, which is defined, which is a class. Yep. We have body, yeah. which is going to change our body. Um, 
So it's going to be red. Then it will be golden rod. And then we have keyframes, which is defined, um, which isn't doing anything yet. Or actually, no, that is doing something. But uh, then body we declare again on 19. So I'm thinking that's going to take the animation of color and change it to the background in the end because it's the last style. Hey, let, let's let, let's let's look at this real quick. So uh, going super raw here, and again, many of you are smarter than I, so feel free to correct me or anything. But we've got our main body rendering an emoji with sunglasses. I use this one all the time. One of my favorites. Class of cool, right? The cool class is defined here, CSS syntax, uh, period, cool. That's defining the class. And we're saying that that background is going to be red. But wait a minute. We're also specifying that the body element has these properties, margin and background. The background being the property that will, you know, have goldenrod. But it's also suffixed by a pound, uh, not pound, uh, exclamation, bang, important. Thank you for that. Um, so. If it were just those two, I'll tell you, it will be the important goldenrod because important means that regardless of CSS specificity, it will be chosen first, right? Then, and this is a little beyond me, but I read the answer so I can explain a little bit. Keyframes come in. So what, what is keyframes doing? This is a decorator, is it right? Or is this a, uh, I don't know the term for it, but it's defining a, a keyframes of color, okay? And then we're saying that we're going to change the color to this background of Rebecca purple. And then this color keyframe is referenced here by the name, I believe. And then we're saying like, you know, in zero seconds, like right away, we're going to do um, linear movement. And then frankly, I don't know what film mode does. I'm sure it just renders it sooner. Like it, uh, film mode maybe someone does know where it, what it looks like after the animation is completed. Shows. I would guess like before it's so it's kind of like a so since greater than or where do you begin in that it's like because an animation could when it completes it could begin at the beginning and like yes. halt there or, or it could begin. halt at the end and this is just telling halt to halt at the end halt that's what I thought thank you that's that's good enough so ready for the answer the answer is Rebecca purple and here's the um, brief exclamation here. The important overrides that suffix we talked about. Any other background colors on the element, but the animation keyframe overrides the background property even with important. That means the background color is actually Rebecca purple. Um, this bug is using important in the first, or the bug in this problem is using important in the first place. You typically try to avoid that. Um, it just makes it messy and hard to debug when there's some important somewhere in your stack and you're wondering why your CSS isn't showing up. It's because someone put important on something way sooner. So basically, uh, animation keyframes can override important, and I didn't know that. So you know, if you have questions, I'm not I'm not the guy there. But these are signs your CSS is difficult to maintain. We'll like to give you problems in the future. Better solution is to use appropriate classes and specificity rules. Who sort of CSS specificity? Oh, I didn't put that in my thing. Yeah, that's that's one you could add specificity. Yeah. It's like uh, you know what overrides. You have the ID of the element, the class of the element, the attributes of the element. Maybe specifying multiple classes over and over again can improve specific. It's it's pretty nuts. You know, take a look at it again. I'm no expert, it's, but it's actually a really cool, really easy formula to follow if you want like the one in ten or yeah, yeah like that. Yeah, yeah. tens. Yeah. So check it out CSS specificity if you want to toggle that um, with all the notes you made. So, um, but yeah, I just thought that would be fun just to wrap up. You know, fun little problem. Go. So yes, I will leave that up then. Feel free to take a look now that we've seen. But uh, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Second Tuesday of every month, we'll be here again. Looking forward to having everyone. Feel free to spend 20 minutes to, to network and chat with Corey. He's done a great job. So let's one, once more give him a quick round of applause, and then we'll head out. Stop it. Stop it. Not yourself. <laughs> and I'll mine weekend here. You too, if you want to pipe in and ask any questions, just feel free to. Uh, you can ask. Yeah. 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 Ye
I wouldn't take anything else seriously. I don't, I don't see it. Okay, I don't know if that's accurate, but that's, that's my intention. Right. right. Yes, yes. For you, of course, I got it wrong. So it's Oh, thank you very much. First time at this. Awesome. <laughs> like but yeah, I'm just a little background. I'm kind of so then it's transition. Of style. Style. You don't think you're a good player. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Different so like, but this is not a good place. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I've been working on weekends. I've been working on weekends. It's like bootstrap. So just trying to make it like a good one. This one is like, if you want a nice spot. I'm working in before. Um, so I think I'm sort of actually the last one. Okay, I think I got to Ah, where's Nick? It's a little different. Oh, yeah. So Nick again, it was just right there in the uh, the same shirts number thirteen. Oh yeah, it's the same just, like, like, just kind of the first yeah. roll. And he was a product manager for for a while, and was like, yeah, I'm just fine. That's the right thing. He just got it. He was like, oh, oh, that's your. That's what I felt like. I've been doing engineering for like engineering days, and I actually got to do. Some cool nice. stuff with Python and I think going to the news even like JavaScript. You know, so they basically yeah. <laughs> you were boost having us because I get my book like you know, like, on the table, like this is the table and I want to strike because it's like I get the details out of the speech kind of specific up or so I can say like that. I knew well and stuff. I knew how to make it already, not just, you know, yeah. someone's watching. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> every time. When I can say, well, you know, I'm going to go show them the other one. It's not that. It's really like, yeah, it seems like the client versus that client. I was about to ask that's what, what, what I tell you, little members are here. I think all that is safe. I guess it's the hardest job in this square. I mean, it is, I guess it is constantly discarded. Right now, I'm off the pitch. I figured that was kind of never understand what it was. Well, but he's all over the one like that's going to be very safe. Because I don't know why. Because I was not in that for the past 10 years from now. When there's C Muppet, we were. Like talented engineers, it's precisely because nobody invested in the junior engineer. Like it's so stupid. But yeah, it is definitely the hardest thing. I mean, the ball has to go after that first job. You have it. And it's like six months. As best as I did, as far as best as it goes, I just think it was like being class and like tax. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, I the only thing I can. I would advise against sweat equity unless you really believe in the product, but, uh, but like legitimate jobs apply for you. Yeah. Yeah, especially because you can get there only for a while. Having that under your belt is more problems that you have. Yeah, yeah, just random stuff. Like, I've got like, specific yeah. projects, but like, I don't have yeah. 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 actual pay yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you can put your bag made up for it's going to be secondary. Not qualified yeah. by their yeah. definitions. Yeah. 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 Uh, because, because it's not the engineers that are writing those. I was going to say, yeah. 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 That's a lie. Yeah. Like, no, I don't know. Yeah. 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 This is like hiring the last couple months. Oh, I'm Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I would, 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 um, um try your hand at building then. And then yeah. you got it, okay. put it away, oh, build it again. Oh, okay. Build it again. Okay. I've got to edit it to new app with React and then read it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, like, learning piano. And every year we do the recitals. They're like, oh, yeah, I know the song. I, I know it. I know it. I it up. Because they didn't practice enough because they think they knew it. <laughs> And that's what happens in the interview. Like, you do know it. You do know it. But, like, there's so much adrenaline and pressure and stuff. Like, I can type. I know how to type, but I get in front of, like, <laughs> Matt sitting next to me alone. Repair programming. Uh, and all of a sudden, I can't spell my name anymore. I'm like, dang, why is my finger not working? This yeah, happened yeah. in front of people. Yeah, like, uh, uh, it's yeah. just most yeah. memory. In the end, like, Take the interviews. Those are the hot beds. It's all all my bad look at it. She's like, this probably is great. Anyway, I was looking at a bunch of places recently that started. I was just going to see a lot of programs. And our game yeah. yeah. started one, the guy that Facebook just started one. And that's what I'm all in the middle store. The only problem I got to deal with is it's spotted out for sure. So you have you just have to do that. Like, you keep it in each job and then try to get it. I don't know. I think they play like state. That's it. Getting more time, but yeah, it was nice. Oh, Pretty sixty hours. Oh, yeah. So, so it's easy. Like, 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 so one like, thing I need to do. Oh, you didn't get it done for 